Hey, everybody, it's Drew Scooter from Sleep With Me Podcast. I'm just doing Question Corner. If you're seeing this video, use the link. It's a free post on our Patreon. Post your questions about the podcast, and I'll try to answer them in the next week or so. I think I have one Question Corner. Oh, by the way, if you uh, uh, listen to the show um, and you haven't signed up as a Patreon patron, uh, we're doing a, uh, we're doing, what is it, 16% off annual subscriptions right now. So great to sit, sign great time to uh, sign up. Most people either are patron. uh, Well, the average patron is just 18 months, which means a lot of people are patrons for like one month. And then a lot of people are patrons for like three or four years. Um, So sign up uh, and uh, yeah, save, get 10, 12 months of constant podcast content for 10, first 10 months or something. I don't know. Matt's shrunk suit. Um, Trying to think what else. Oh, if you are a patron, if for some reason you don't have your bonus content set up, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed from your phone's browser. We always recommend uh, a great app we recommend is Pocket Cast. Uh, that works on Apple and Android. And um, if you ever need help, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron help. And if you need support, uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron support is the place to go. All right, I have one question about work-life balance uh, from our patron discord basics is, well, let me see if I can find it. Do, 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 do. Scoots looking stuff up. He's looking in the wrong place, but a look again. Okay. How did this is from professor Q, how do you manage to find a good balance between podcast life and personal life? Were there any challenges in the beginning? Is there still stuff, stuff you're struggling with today? Yeah, it's still a struggle. Uh, I mean, just like any small, like any, in, if, if you're self-employed, it's going to be a lot harder to, um, and, and you really care about the stuff you're doing. Um, and I'm, I don't mean that in a, a negative way, like the day, the day job I had when I started the podcast was a job I cared about. It wasn't a high paying job. Um, but it was a job when I left, I didn't really have to think about work. I know some people have jobs that are a lot more consuming than that. Um, but what tips can I give about trying to have a work-life balance, which is something I'm still working on. Um, when I started the show, um, I looked at it like a hobby. Uh, so I was starting the podcast for fun and there wasn't really an audience or expectation that people would listen. It was just an experiment and I had done other creative stuff. So it was just something I did. It was very time consuming. It just happened to be, it wasn't intentionally around the time I got sober, but they gave me a little bit more time to invest in the podcast. Um, cause I was kind of restructuring my life, but yeah, I had a full-time job. I would write on the train. So if you have a commute or you could have a commute, uh, and not drive, uh, people th- see it as a negative, but I took a bus and a train, or walked a bus and a train, um, and they gave me time to write for the podcast. Um, and then, yeah, on the weekends and at night, I would be working on the show. Uh, wasn't great work-life balance, um, but it was uh, something, again, I was building and um, trying out. And I also like wasn't going to do it forever. I had different place points um, where I would assess, do I want to keep making this show? Um, as a hobby and as it became more and more time consuming, those things, uh, those points became more important. Cause it was like, yeah, I can't keep doing it at this pace. Um, and when I didn't have that, I think my goal was to make it the show for two years was my biggest goal. So then after that, I kind of lost my way and my work-life balance really fell out of line. So if I could do it again, I would again, assess every month or two, do I want to still make the show is how I'm making the show sustainable. And when I've had those points have been turning points in the podcast where I've been like, this just doesn't work. Like we used to put out three shows a week. We went down to two a week because it just wasn't time wise and financially sustainable. And then I'm constantly kind of trying to see, hey, what what is possible, particularly right now, the podcast is at a time where it's like, huh, what's the future of the show going to be? Like how many episodes a year are we going to be able to put out that makes sense um, cause it's still something I'm not great at, but it's also something of like, um, I don't know. It, it's something I really like doing and, um, and I don't know where it's going. Like, like, so it's like, huh, like, uh, 
uh, is the podcast so like um, and and you know like our ability to to what, what's sustainable, I guess, and that sustainability includes two budgets: a financial budget and a time budget. Because if you're the person in charge, you're probably um, like getting compensated for a large portion of your time with what you're putting into the show, like and wondering if you're going to get that back, long, like like sweat equity or whatever you want to call it. And so you have to look at your time and budget that and say, oh, how many hours a week does it make to work, like put out an episode of Sleep With Me? It, it, it's a lot of labor to put out Sleep With Me that's spread across everybody that works on the show. And then, hey, if I was paying everyone to do this, well, everyone does get paid. And including myself, but like, like, oh, you know, so it's like thinking about those things, but that's only down the road. Like I would just like, um, I don't know. I just went on a tangent that that wasn't even related to that. Uh, but that does have to do with the work life balance. Cause it helps me look at like, oh, okay, am I really being responsible for my time? Um, and it's also hard with, uh, this kind of digital work that you can spread it across seven days a week. Um, that's a good thing. And it's a tough thing. It gives me uh, more time to work on the show. I don't work a lot on Saturdays, but I do work a lot on Sundays. And that's my goal, been my goal for the past couple of years that I haven't been um, successful at is like, Hey, let's, is there a way to not, there is like, is there a way to only work like one or two hours on Sunday or one or two or three hours on Sunday and spend the rest of the time doing stuff. And, um, and that's my issue again. Like, and I think like working for yourself off for, or, or working on projects that you want to do in your spare time is the same thing is like, it offers you opportunity to kind of say, Oh, I'm the biggest pro like I'm the problem here. Like, um, I mean, for me, it's like, like, uh, fear comes up. It's like, well, okay, well, I just like this, like, this is the best day to get this done or whatever. Or I, I'm a, like, uh, Oh, well, I like, uh, so it's like, oh, is this fear of de delegation? No. Okay. Is it fear of like, if I don't get this done? No, this has to get, okay. So then it's fear of like organizing and restructuring things. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's probably that fear. So it like gives me opportunity to kind of see where I'm the creator of my own um, issues. Right. And, and oh, like, uh, uh, like, like my biggest fear was cutting back or one of the biggest fears was cutting back on the podcast from three times a week to two times a week. And that just happened to be strangely enough when I, um, I'd slowly, uh, grew, grew the podcast to, to be able to pay people like Chris Postal and Carl W to work on the show. And then slowly grew an emergency fund for the show. And then I started like working on the, getting paid by the podcast part-time and luckily I didn't have a high paying job. So it was a little bit easier for me to transition, um, to half time working on the podcast, half time at my day job. And then eventually full-time that was over like, I think six years of making the show, but the year I happened to, um, it was just weird timing, but it was like, as I was transitioning to working on the show full-time, I was really working on the budgets and I was like, Oh, there just isn't a budget. Uh, like when you break down like the cost of the show, there just wasn't ever like going to be sustainable to make three episodes a week. Um, with that work-life balancing, again, working, looking at your budget and your time budget, like how many hours does it take to make an episode? Okay. Okay. Well, okay. How many of those hours am I paying other people to work on it? Okay. And then how many hours am I working on it? Okay. How many hours am I able to comp compensate myself for? It's like, oh, okay, that's not realistic. Like, and, and it's just like, what's going to be better for the long-term thing about the show is always like, so it's like just a process of discovery. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's easy for anybody either. So it's like, uh, uh, yeah. I mean, like I said, I was really lucky in the fact that I had a job. I did not have a high salary, which is actually can be tougher for people. Um, I think to, to, to transition to something because it's like, if you're making a high salary and then you have high expenses, um, um, it makes it more precarious where my biggest issue leaving my job was my um, like health insurance. Cause in, like in the U S um, it was figuring that part out. And um, yeah. So, I mean, I consider myself lucky, but it's like also a result like, like of like hard work and, um, and hard work based on kind of like, Oh, I know what it feels like not to be able to sleep. 
and I want people to be able to sleep. I like, uh, I mean, that's really what it comes down to the show. It's like the relatability behind that and saying like, Hey, I know how it feels out there. And this show works for the people it works for. I like making it. The people like listening to it. Um, yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah, hit me up with your questions. Uh, and uh, thanks for that question. <laughs>